Today we're going to look at the use of tree diagrams to determine the probability of events. Jason tossed two coins into the air. How many possible outcomes are there? If we were to draw a tree diagram, we would start with the first coin, which if he tossed, it could end up as heads or tails. And then the second coin he tossed could also land heads or tails. So this is our tree diagram. If we count along the bottom of our branches, we have one, two, three, four possible outcomes. If we have the question, what is the probability of tossing two heads, we're going to look at our tree diagram and find out which branches have two heads. So we have one head, two heads. Here's one. This one's a head and a tail, so that doesn't count. We're looking for two heads. Tails, heads, and tails, tails. So really, there was only one way in which we had two heads. So the probability equals, we had one out of a total possible four. So the probability is one over four. What is the probability of tossing one head and one tail? So again, we're going to look at our branches of our tree and look for one head and one tail. So there's one. Here's another, a tail and a head. And this one's tail, tail. So that one's definitely not it. So I have two out of a possible four. We're always going to reduce that to lowest terms, which is a half. Let's look at another example. Lisa has red, blue, and green shirts and black and tan pants. How many different outfits can she make? So at the very top of our tree, we'll put her shirts, red, blue, and green. So she has red, blue, and green shirts. She has black and tan pants, so that'll be our next branch. Black, tan, we're going to do that for each shirt. So if she wore a blue shirt, she could wear the black pants or the tan pants. And if she wore a green shirt, she could wear with it the black pants or the tan pants. So how many different outfits can she make? Well, we're going to look at our lowest branch and we're going to count across. One, two, three, four, five, six possible outfits. So six possible outfits. Now we're going to look at our questions down below. What is the probability of Lisa wearing a red shirt with either pants? So we're going to find the red shirts, so that's these ones, with either pants. So she could wear the red and black, or she might decide to wear the red and tan. So we've counted two possibilities. Out of a total, six outcomes. So that's two over six, and we're always going to reduce that. I know they're both divisible by two, so that's going to give us one third. The next question asks, what is the probability of Lisa wearing a blue shirt and tan pants? So we're going to look at our tree. We're going to find the blue shirt and the tan pants. So there's only one possibility of wearing blue shirt and tan pants out of a total of six. So the probability is one over six. Our last example is about rolling dice. Steve rolled two dice. How many possible outcomes are there? Well, for the first dice, you can roll, roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six. And then he rolls his second dice. And from that, he can get a one, two, three, four, five, or six. And with every one, it's like that. One, two, three, four, five, six. If he rolled a three first, he could roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six. If he rolled a four, he could roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six on the second dice. We rolled a five first. 
three, four, five, six. He could roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six on the second dice. And if he rolled a six, he could roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six. So how many possible outcomes are there? Well, we'd have to count all the way across on our bottom branch. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36 total possibilities. We could also get to that by multiplying 6 by 6 groups. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 times 6 is 36. Now let's go down to the questions. What is the probability of rolling doubles? Well, doubles is what happens if I roll the same number on both dice. So say I rolled dice and I got two twos. That would be doubles. So how many times does that happen? Well, if I roll a one on the first dice and a one on the second dice, that's one pair of doubles. If I roll a two and then a two, a three and a three, a four and a four, a five and a five, and a six and a six. So that happens one, two, three, four, five, only six times out of a possible 36. And that can be reduced as one over six. What is the probability that both dice are larger than four? So that doesn't include four, it has to be larger. Well, if I roll a one, two, or three, or four, those are definitely not going to count because one of the dice will be smaller than four. So I'm only going to be looking at this section of my tree. If I roll a 5 with the first dice, I'm going to have to roll a 5 or a 6 with the second dice. And if I roll a 6 with the first dice, again I'll have to roll a 5 or a 6 with the second dice to keep both dice larger than 4. So I only have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4 possibilities out of our grand total of 36 outcomes. Again, this can be reduced. They're both divisible by 4, so that's going to give us 1 over 9. So that's just a quick overview of using tree diagrams to solve probability questions. If you have any questions of your own, please leave them in the comment section below.